Preferred securities is somewhat of a broad term encompassing traditional preferred stock, hybrid securities, and junior subordinated bonds. There are subtle differences between these securities. Some preferred securities have equity-like characteristics, like paying quarterly dividends, and some have debt-like characteristics and make semi-annual interest payments similar to corporate bonds. What makes all these securities preferred securities is that they are all subordinated in a company's capital structure, below that of senior unsecured and senior subordinated debt. What preferred securities also have in common is that dividends or interest payments can be deferred by the issuer without putting the security in default. Because preferreds are low in a company's capital structure, there's often only high quality companies with very strong balance sheets that are able to issue preferreds. Since most investors would not want to own a subordinated security from a low quality company. What's great about preferred securities is that they, they carry very attractive yields because they are subordinated securities that are typically issued by very high quality companies. So an investor is able to earn a very attractive yield, in fact, similar to yields from high yield bonds but receive them from very high quality companies. What's also very attractive about preferred securities is that they tend not to be as interest rate sensitive compared with other fixed income securities. This is because many preferred securities have a fixed to floating rate coupon structure, whereby the coupon on the security is fixed for five years, and then will float at a credit spread over a benchmark like LIBOR. For more than 20 years, Manulife Investment Management has had a fixed income strategy and a portfolio management team dedicated to the preferred security asset class. We currently manage $5.3 billion of preferred assets. This positions us as one of the world's largest managers in the asset class. I began my career in 1992. I joined Manulife Investment Management in 2002 and was named to the preferred income portfolio management team in 2017. Joe Bazoin began his career in 1993. He joined Manulife Investment Management in 2011 and was named to the portfolio management team in 2015. And then Rick Baker serves as the strategy's client portfolio manager. He began his career in 1999 and joined Manulife in 2010. There are three primary investment objectives to our strategy. There are first, uh, to maintain a high level of current income via a portfolio of preferred securities with an average credit rating of investment grade or triple B minus. Second is the preservation of capital. And then our third objective is to seek select total return opportunities uh, via preferred securities with equity-like characteristics and securities trading at discounts to their intrinsic value. Now, to achieve these objectives, we adhere to a disciplined investment philosophy and investment process. Our investment approach seeks out issuers with enduring business models, strong balance sheets, sustainable levels of free cash flow, very strong management teams, and stable to improving ESG profiles. Our expectation is that the John Hancock Preferred Income ETF will be differentiated from the passive preferred ETFs in three ways. Broader industry diversification, higher exposure to floating rate instruments, and third, the ability to select securities from a larger investment universe. First, our preferred income ETF is going to offer a greater degree of industry diversification than the passive ETFs. Three quarters of the preferred security universe is comprised of securities in the banking and the financial services sector, so three quarters of the passive ETFs are invested in banking and financial service securities. This sector demonstrated a lot of volatility going back to the great financial crisis. Our preferred income ETF is going to maintain a broader degree of industry diversification. Our, we expect our allocations to the banking and the finance sector to be very similar to our weightings to the defensive regulated electric and gas utility sector. Our strategy is going to underweight the index's allocation to the bank and financial services sector and overweight the allocation to the regulated utilities. The remaining part of the portfolio will be investments in energy infrastructure, telecom, technology, and consumer sectors. Now, secondly, our preferred income ETF is going to have higher exposure to floating rate instruments and lower exposure to fixed rate instruments than the passive ETFs. This positioning is going to outperform when interest rates begin to move higher. Passive preferred ETFs focus their investments on the $25 par retail segment of the asset class because that's the composition of their indexes. But 80% of this segment is comprised of fixed rate instruments. So 80% of passive ETFs are in fixed rate securities. We expect the John Hancock preferred income ETF to be overweight floating rate instruments versus the passive ETFs 
and underweight fixed rate instruments. And then thirdly, our actively managed preferred income ETF will look to all segments of the asset class for relative value opportunities. The passive ETFs just focus on two segments and overlook the other two. Four segments make up the preferred security asset class, retail preferreds, convertible preferreds, baby bonds, and then the $1,000 par institutional preferred segment. Passive ETFs just focus on the retail and the baby bond segments. Our actively managed ETF will invest in these segments too, but we will also look for attractive relative value among convertible preferreds and the $1,000 par institutional preferreds. Importantly, we don't see inflation as being overly concerning over the long term. And we believe that we're still in a lower for longer interest rate environment. Plus, there remains substantial demand for yield globally, with U.S. yields looking very attractive, which should also help to maintain relatively low rates. All of this results in a positive environment for preferreds, with credit spreads remaining stable and rates staying low. Again, it's important to remember that preferreds are issued usually by high-quality companies that have strong balance sheets, with a large percentage of preferred issues coming from the financial services and utility sectors. The fundamentals of both these sectors are excellent. Financial services companies have benefited from the recent rise in interest rates. Their balance sheets are in the best shape in decades. In addition, utilities, a sector that we're overweight, have excellent fundamentals as well, which are being driven by significant investments in renewable energy. So we feel very positive about the asset class and the main sectors that make up the preferred market, namely financial services and utilities.